Hi everyone, Ian here from the Media Center, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use false color. False color provides an overlay of solid colors, each of which represent different IRE light reflectance levels within the frame. This makes false color incredibly useful because visually, it's much easier to understand when compared to other exposure tools, such as the waveform monitor but also the wide variety of distinct vibrant colors allows an operator to pinpoint specific areas of the frame and isolate how the exposure is affected in that area, while easily monitoring how other areas of the frame also respond when a light source is added or removed. Furthermore, false color works well in bright shooting conditions, which may make exposing a flat log file, for example, much more difficult especially if the nit brightness of the screen is low. Technical tools such as this don't lie and provide a much more accurate way to expose. Now, most manufacturers will use similar colors to represent certain IRE values. And this makes the false color scale easy to use when moving and shooting across different camera systems and manufacturers. However, there are some caveats that you should be aware of. When a false color tool is built directly into the camera, the false color scale will be designed for those cameras specific picture profiles and the manufacturer's recommended exposure values for the middle gray point, the skin tone point, the white point and the black point. This means the colors on a false color scale will adjust themselves for the correct IRE values of that camera's picture profile. For example, in the Canon C70, if you choose the YDR picture profile, the color green, which represents middle gray, will appear on the false color tool when the light reflectance of an object sits at around 40 to 45%. However, if you change the picture profile to Canon Log 3, the color green, which is still mapped for middle gray, will appear when the light reflectance of an object reaches 34% which is the IRE value for middle gray in Canon Log 3. This makes a built-in false color tool accurate and reliable, regardless of the picture profile you use. In addition, most camera manufacturers will provide guides either directly in the camera or via their official manuals for which colors represent which light reflectance levels. For example, the C70 has a false color index, which can be viewed from the internal menu, while the Blackmagic 6K has a false color scale that runs down the side of the live viewing page once false color is enabled. The Red Komodo has both a traditional false color guide, but also a second unique false color scale, both of which are designed for different use cases. Because of this, although the false color scales have many similarities, they're always unique to the chosen camera and manufacturer. So make sure you're learning the correct color scale for the specific camera. So what are some of the common colors that you'll see? Well, on the black magic, you have the following. Purple represents black detail loss. This means you're completely crushing the darker pixels and losing pixel information in that area of the frame. Blue represents near black detail loss. This means that pixel information is still visible, but the area in question is very dark and is sitting within the shadows. Green represents the middle gray point, which is a value that sits within the mid-tone region, and it's the value at which an 18% middle gray card can be correctly exposed at. Middle gray is the value that all camera light meters use when attempting to determine a neutral and even exposure. So it's a good starting point for areas of the frame which are being lit by your primary light source, i.e. it's not sitting in the shadows or in the highlights. Middle gray is also an optimal exposure starting point for darker skin tones. Pink represents one stop above middle gray, and this is normally where Caucasian skin tones will sit. Yellow represents when an area of the frame is getting close to the white clipping point and red represents when the white pixels are clipping, and this area of the frame is losing all of its pixel information. Various shades of gray also sit in between these distinct colors and represent the light values in between. 
the darker grey tones represent areas of the shadow regions above the colour blue, while the lighter grey regions represent the brighter regions of the image between green and pink, and between pink and yellow. These colours are also the same across the Canon C70's false colour scale. Now, as well as cameras having built-in false colour scales, many external monitors and recorders also provide them. However, unlike a camera's built-in false colour scale, many external scales will set their colours to a set of broad IRE values, in the hope that they'll work across a wide range of manufacturers and picture profiles. This means that the colours which are normally used for specific exposure reference points, most notably green for middle grey and pink for skin tones, may not be correct in terms of the IRE values. For example, in the Atomos Shinobi, the colour green, which usually represents middle grey across most false colour scales, becomes visible when an object reflects light at 43 to 47% IRE. While this IRE value may be okay and work well for middle grey across more standard gammas, such as Sony's Cinegamma or Canon's YDR, for Blackmagic film picture profiles or Canon C-Log or Sony S-Log, these IRE values would be incorrect for middle grey. Now, unfortunately, in many monitors, the colours are not able to be remapped to specific IRE values, so you're limited to these monitors' predetermined settings. Now, this isn't always the case. For example, the Odyssey 7Q Plus can remap colours, but this is the case for a lot of them. So ideally, if a camera has a built-in false colour scale, always use that over an external scale. But if you do decide to use external false colour, make sure you can check which colours represent which light reflectance levels. So let's look at a couple of examples in different scenarios so you can get a better understanding of how I read and work with false colour. So for this example, I'm shooting in Canon YDR and I have a range of exposure points so you can get a better understanding of how the false colour scale is working. The areas in purple are showing that the pixels are fully crushed and I'm retaining no pixel information. This means I'll be unable to manipulate that area and bring back detail in post-production. And if I turn the false color off, you'll see that the area is indeed very dark. Now, this is a small area of the frame and isn't the primary focus within the scene. So even though it may be crushed, it doesn't mean my overall image will look terrible. However, ideally I'd still prefer for this area to not be crushed and still have detail as this will provide more options in post-production. So to amend this, I could add some additional light into the scene. Now I could open my aperture, but that would affect the entire image. So instead I'm going to use an external cinema light to raise the shadows in that specific area. This now means there's visible pixel information in that area, but it's still very dark and therefore sitting in the lowest region of the shadows. Now, having areas which sit in shadows is perfectly fine. Shadows help us create mood and context while building atmosphere and adding contrast. This creates a three-dimensional world that feels real and emotive. So don't be afraid to use shadows and don't worry if the false color scale shows areas in darkness. Just make sure that they're the right areas. For example, if I closed my aperture down, and the entire frame, including the lit side of the face, which is not meant to be dark, fell into shadow, this would obviously indicate incorrect exposure. And you'd see this via the false color. The color green is referencing 18% middle gray, which as I mentioned earlier, is a value that sits within the mid-tone region of an image, and it's the value that all camera light meters use when attempting to determine a neutral even exposure. To correctly expose a middle grey point, you ideally want to place either an 18% middle grey card or use an object which is of a similar tone in a neutral and evenly lit area of the frame. For example, in this shot, I place the grey card in the angle of my key light, which is aiming to illuminate the object within the mid-tone region, i.e. it's not sitting in the shadows or in the highlights. When this grey card appears as green on the false color scale, 
it's indicating that the camera thinks the mid-tone regions of the frame are at correct exposure. Now, this is a starting point and should be used as a guideline, depending on the style and mood you want to create within the scene. For example, you may decide that a large portion of your frame or the most important parts of the frame shouldn't be sitting in the mid-tone region, and instead you want them sitting in the shadow region to create more of a moody atmosphere. Now in this scenario, you wouldn't aim to see green on the false color scale, but instead you'd be monitoring to see dark gray or blue, depending how far into the shadows you'd want the object to be. For example, in these side-by-side -side shots, the background and primary focus point are the same, but the lighting is altered to create a different mood and atmosphere. In the first shot, we have high key lighting with more areas of the frame evenly lit. The background is brighter and we're using broadside lighting, i.e. the camera is angled to focus on the brightest side of the subject's face. In this shot, the shadows are overall more brighter. In contrast, in this second shot, the background is now much darker and the reflectance values are sitting in a lower region of those shadows. Similarly, we're now using dark side lighting in which the camera is angled to focus on the darkest side of the face, which is sitting within the shadows. After the green middle gray point, we have a gradual lighter gray tone, which represents areas of the mid tones before we reach the color pink. Pink represents one stop above middle gray, and this is normally a good starting point for Caucasian skin tones. When capturing skin tones, you want to make sure that the brightest region of the skin is exposed correctly. For example, in this shot, in which the subject's face is lit from one side with a key light, giving us the Rembrandt effect, we'd want to ensure that the brightest side is exposed correctly to protect the detail of the skin. So when my false color is turned on, I'll aim to have the pink color sitting across the brighter side of the face. Now this doesn't mean the whole surface area from that side of the face needs to be pink. Some areas may be pink, some areas may be gray, and some areas may be green. And that's because different areas of the face may have shadows spilling onto it, or there may be different shades of skin color on the face, or parts of the skin may appear more shiny depending on how the light is spilling and reflecting off the skin. If you're airing on the side of caution or using non-log gamma curves, the brightest point may be pink, while other areas may be a lighter gray. Or if you've got a lot of dynamic range in your camera, for example, when shooting in log, you may choose the ETTR method and expose to the right and push the brighter regions of the skin past the pink color and into the lighter gray region. As you can see on this side-by-side -side comparison, the skin tone exposure is well controlled across both examples. The main thing is that you don't want to see the color yellow or red appearing on the skin tones, as this means you will be heavily overexposing the skin and potentially losing detail. Yellow means you're near the clipping point. This means you're within the brightest regions of the image. This yellow color represents the maximum value before you begin to lose pixel information. Finally, areas in red mean full clipping has occurred and all pixel information has been lost. In this example, I'm happy with most of my image. The main talent has good exposure. However, the practical light in the background is clipping. So to adjust this, I can either add a dimmer switch to the plug or if this isn't available, I can use some ND gels and place it around the light bulb to lower the light's intensity. This produces a better and more gradual roll off for the highlights. If I were struggling to get this in Canon YDR, I could switch over to Canon Log 3, which will help me retain some of the additional information, providing more range across the shadows, midtones, and highlights. You'll also see that when I switch between different picture profiles, the false color will change because exposure values will shift for different areas of that frame. Log can be more difficult to expose with because it's flat and has less contrast and saturation. 
and it's especially difficult to view when the screen is affected by direct sunlight. So false color is a great option to consider as your primary exposure tool. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.